In this video, I'm showing you how I created a mobile-friendly website in Canva to collect emails for my new digital product. I'm Mai, and on this channel, I help you master Canva one simple step at a time. So let's dive in. First, we will go to Canva's homepage. To create a new blank website, we can click on the website icon and Canva will set up a blank website design. If you want to explore some templates, click on more and choose website from the left menu. Up here, you will see some different size options for websites, but clicking on them will still lead you to a new blank website design. I can also choose from these categories to see templates by specific topics. I can scroll down here or use filters to narrow down the options. You don't need a pro account to create a website on Canva, but if you're using a free account, only part of these templates will be available for you. So I'll pick one of the website templates here just to get started. I choose this one, click customize this template and Canva creates a new website design from it. I see that this template has a few different pages, but I don't need them all, so I'll delete the extra pages and keep only the first one for now. Today I'm designing a website to collect email addresses ahead of the launch of my new product, which is a Canva library full of tutorials and ideas on how to use Canva's features. I want to give those who join the waitlist early access, along with a discount for the first 30 people who purchase it. So let's begin. I'll start by changing the main text in the hero section. I'll paste in my text here and make a few adjustments. I'll remove this logo since I don't need it. I'll change the font to my brand's font, which is Poppins. Quickly decrease the line spacing, make the text a little bigger, position it slightly and add a subheadline. I'll paste the subheadline text and change the font to open source semi bold. I'll change the background color to my brand's lighter black and set the text color to my brand's yellow to match my style. I'll add the Canva logo since this product is related to Canva and I want visitors to understand that as soon as they land here. I'll make a few more minor adjustments to the text so it's perfectly positioned. Now let's create a CTA call to action button for joining the waitlist. I'll press R on the keyboard to create a rectangle, round the corners and adjust its size. I'll add the text, change it to all uppercase, select my font style, change the bottom color and adjust everything a bit more. Now I want to add a mockup on the right side of the page to give a preview of the library. I'll delete the existing image and the pink shape. I'll go to Apps, select Mockups and choose Computer category since I want to present it on a laptop. I think I'll choose this one and position it on the right side of the page. I have the image I want to put here, so I'll drop it inside the mockup, adjust it to be a bit bigger and make it look good. I'll click Apply Changes and it looks much, much better. Now I want to ensure the image is centered at exactly half of the page width. Let's quickly preview this section by clicking Preview in the top right corner. It looks fine on desktop mode and isn't bad on mobile either. I'll check the width of this design. It's 1366px, so I'll divide that by 2 which gives 683 px. I'll use the rulers, if you don't see them, press Shift and R, and drag this to the exact center of the page. And adjust everything accordingly. Now the first section is ready. The next thing I want to do is add a section showing the benefits of my Canva library. I'll add a page, remove the ruler, because I don't need them anymore, change the page color to yellow and start creating three benefits cards. I'll add a text box, paste in the text, switch it out of all caps and make it a bit smaller. 
I'll duplicate it and add a subtext. I'll change it to interfont, make it a little smaller and set it to non-bold. I'll adjust everything slightly and add an icon. I found some moving icons on another website, so I'll go to the videos under the uploads tab and add the first one. I'll change its color to all white since I want it to be on a black card and change also the text to be white as well. Next, I'll hit R to create a new rectangle, place it under the text, round the corners and put it beneath everything. I'll center everything and when it's positioned just right, I'll group it all together and place it on the side of the page. I'll duplicate it to create a second card, ungroup it, bring in the moving icon from the uploads, adjust it, change its color, remove the other icon and quickly update the text. Since the text on this card is a bit longer than the last one, I'll make the card a little taller and adjust the first card as well so they will be at the same size. I'll group each card and move them aside to make space for the third one. Once it's ready, I'll quickly check it in the mobile preview mode, just to make sure everything looks right. As you can see, the button here looks a bit off, but I'll fix it later. Let's see the cards. They look great. Now, I'll add a headline for this section. I'll insert the text box, paste in my text, adjust it and center it. Let's quickly check how it looks. It's important to check responsiveness while designing so there are no surprises later. I love it. The only thing left is to fix the button at the top, but I'll come back to that later. Next, let's create another CTA button for this section. To keep everything looking good on mobile, I'll create this one on a new page. I'll make it much smaller and change its color to my brand's black. I'll duplicate the bottom from above and place it exactly in the middle of this smaller section. I want this button to be purple so it stands out, so I'll change the bottom color and set the text to yellow. I want to add a mouse click animation as well. I'll search for one, add it, change the colors, adjust its position, and let's preview it. It looks good, but it's not quite centered. This is because the margins on both sides are not even. Let me show you how to fix it. I'll add a new rectangle, resize and position it to cover the elements and center it perfectly in the section. I'll set its color to match the section color, place it beneath everything and create a middle section to balance the left and right margins. Let's group everything together and preview it. As you can see, it looks much better now. Now let's fix the top button. If I adjust its position slightly, that should do it. Let's see. Yes. All right, let's move on to the last section. I'll add a new page, change the color to yellow, and since you're familiar with the process by now, I'll save you some time and I'll fast forward everything. Okay, I think it looks great. Let's check the responsiveness. It looks fantastic. I'm really happy with it. The only thing left is the extra space at the top. I'll quickly fix it by selecting all the elements in the section and moving them up slightly. Then I'll make the page a bit shorter and check it again.
nice. The last thing I want to add here is small section with an arrow that will scroll back to the top of the website. I'll add a new page, make it smaller and search for an arrow. I'll pick this one, rotate it, resize it, change its color to white and center it. Now I'll add the link. I'll click on the arrow, hit Command K, select the top section, Home, and hit Done. Let's test it. I'll hit Preview, scroll down, click on the arrow, and it takes me right back to the top. I can add any link I want here, either an external link or internal link to one of the pages in my design. Next, I'll add a link to a form where people can join the waitlist for my Canva library. Let's open Google Forms and create it. In Google Forms, I'll start by creating a blank form. And the first thing I'll do is to give it a name. I'll name it exactly what it is, Join My Canva Library Waitlist. Next, I'll add a description so people understand what they are signing up for and what they will receive. Now let's create the questions. The first one will be first name. I'll change the type to short answer and rename it. I'll toggle the required option so that people won't be able to submit without filling it in. I'll duplicate this field and change it to last name and also required. I'll duplicate again, rename it to email address and set it as required as well. Then I'll duplicate once more, but this time I'll change it to multiple choices so people can select an answer. I'm adding this question to confirm that people agree to receive an email from me. I'll add two answers options here and instead of duplicating, I'll add a new question. This one will give people the option to join my newsletter. I'll name it Join the Free Newsletter, add a friendly message, and change it to a checkbox. I'll quickly add a nice emoji, and now let's customize the form's appearance. I'll click on Customize Theme at the top, change the header style to Impact Font, so it's bold, and set the form color to my brand's yellow for consistency. Lastly, I'll upload a header image I created specifically for this form. Now let's preview it. It looks great. I'll fill in all the fields and submit it to make sure everything works as it should. I'll use a random email address, check the boxes and hit submit. Let me just rename the form real quick and let's see the response. I can also see the responses in Google Sheet. I'll just have a quick look here and let's link it together. I can use to create a blank sheet or use an existing one. I'll click Create, and as you can see, the details are all here. Now the only thing left is to have the link copied so I can paste it in my website. I will click Send, go to Send via Link, tick the shorten URL option and copy the link. So let's get back to Canva. I'll start by adding links to all the buttons I created. I'll click on each button, hit Command and K, paste the link here and click on Done. When I add a link, the text gets an underline, but I can easily remove it by clicking here. Let's quickly add the link to all the buttons. I'll need to ungroup the button to add the link and I'll remember to group everything back together afterward. I'll also add a link to the last button here and we're all set. All the buttons are now linked. Let's quickly check that each button is clickable. This time I'll check it on desktop mode. As you can see, it's clickable here, also here, and on the last one, I click here just to confirm it sends me to the correct page. Yes, great. All right, now the last thing I'll do before publishing is to name the pages so they will appear in the navigation bar. I'll show you the navigation bar just in a second. I'll go to grid view and name the pages I want in the navigation. 
The first one is already named home, which is fine. The second will be benefits. The third page is just the bottom, so I won't name it. And the fourth will be join the waitlist. So now the named pages will appear in the navigation bar. Let me show you how it looks. I'll click on preview and tick this little checkbox down here that says include a navigation menu. Now I can see the navigation bar at the top with the pages I named. I can click on them and it will take me to that specific section on the website. You will also see this menu on mobile. When publishing, you can decide whether to include this menu and as I mentioned, pages without names won't appear in the navigation menu. Now let's publish the website. The first thing I'll do is rename the design to My Canva Library Waitlist and then I'll click Publish Website. Here I can choose if the website should be responsive, meaning it will adapt on mobile and other devices. I'll keep this checked since I want it to be responsive. The second option is to include the navigation menu. In my case, I don't really need it because my site doesn't have many sections, so I'll uncheck this option. Next, I can edit my URL. It will be mymichal.my.canva.site slash canva library. If you'd like a custom URL, you can always purchase your own domain. I'll click on Publish Settings and here I can add a short description that will show up on the tab as you can see here. I'll write My's Canva Library. Lastly, under Advanced Settings, I can create a password if I need the website to be protected. Although, in my case, I don't need one. I can also choose if I want my website to be visible in search results. Yeah, why not? And finally, there is a very cool feature here. I can add a thumbnail image so when I share this website on social media or on other platforms, it will display the thumbnail as well. I love this option and I've created a cute thumbnail just for this. I'll upload it from my computer. And now I'm ready to publish. I'll hit publish website and in a few seconds, my website will be live. I can copy the link or click here to open it in my browser. How nice is that? And it was so, so easy compared to other solutions out there. Let's just double check the buttons to ensure everything's working perfectly. Amazing. So I've got a website. And that's a wrap for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to speed up your design process, check out my next tutorial on creating a Canva brand kit. See you there.